For two days, the press have speculated over the name of City's new manager. The clear favourite is John Bond from Norwich City. City chairman Peter Swales has telephoned Norwich City's Sir Arthur South. South wants £200,000 compensation for Bond because his contract still has six years to run. But he gave Swales permission to approach his manager. Bond wants the job. He comes to Manchester to meet the board. My question has always been to you, who is the, who is the man, the genius, who's the god that can, can, could take over uh, Malcolm's role here? One of the qualities of a manager, apart from knowledge of football and ability to coach, is man management, and perhaps I should say boy, boy management. Sydney, you've got John Bond's got his son in the side. I mean, you can't have gone through a more testing period, surely, with yeah. a young player coming through, and people saying he's no good at certain stages. I've heard John Bond say that himself. John Bond may indeed be the man we want. I'm just raising the point that we ought to know a little bit more about his ability and what his attitude is, and that can only come out in interview. Do you realise how serious the position is here? Yeah. And that we're very, it's quite a fair bet that we can get relegated. Yeah, I'm, I'm terribly aware of the position. Don't you have any fears about that? Because I, I mean, I, if I come here and if I sign on for this as manager of this football club, I know it's a mammoth task and I know the needs of you gents around this table and I also know the needs of the supporters who come and pay the monies to watch the team week in and week out. Because um, it's not Norwich City like, you know, we're, I think we're in the big time. I think you're in the big time. That's why I want to be manager of the place. And uh, without any conceit, I don't think you'd have asked me up here today if I hadn't have got some um, ability. And I think I have the ability to lift your side and give it a certain amount of confidence and, uh, and maybe a little bit more determination to, to go on and win a few games. What sort of order would you tackle the job in? What would be the first thing you would do? Well, I think, I think the team overall has got to be... Um, uh, realise that uh, it's got to be terribly disciplined now. I don't. I, mean, I ain't going to have people who are going about and, and excuse your expression, pissing about and, and, and sort of flouting the image of Manchester City about. I don't. I don't think that's right. Mm. Oh, you know. So I, 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 if I, if I feel that, if I feel that people are not. I came prepared to. To be a little disillusioned, but I'm very impressed with him. You think that applies to you? Definitely. Ian? No, I couldn't make an assumption on the, what's happened here in a quarter of an hour. I wouldn't give an opinion. But well, you're not against it? I've said before, I support the chairman of Manchester City, and I will support you in what you do. What I feel, I shall keep to myself. Chris? I'm very impressed with him. I think you've got a good fellow. Yes. Yes, very good. He's not disappointed me. Very good. Leave it to the chairman and... Um, no, 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 no. Oh, yes, <laughs> I won't be about the bus, Johnny. It's subject to... Um, I've been at a sort of uh, knowledge side out, compensation side, you know, we'd like to offer you the job. Oh, that's very nice. We'd be pleased to accept it. Peter Swales managed to halve the Norwich chairman's compensation demand and they agreed on £100,000. So John Bond left Norwich, but under a cloud. He took away with him his youth team manager and his chief coach, but left behind Norwich City's captain, his own son, Kevin. Three days later, Bond arrives for his first meeting with the Manchester City players. Well, I've just got you in here together today, just for a couple of minutes, um, for my sins or whichever. I'm going to be your new manager. I'll be to decide how you and myself work together how long I'm going to be here. And if you agree, he may tell you that I intend to be here for some considerable time. So John Benson will be my assistant manager while I'm here. While you're here, I would like to think that um, you and I will know each other. I'll know you as the players and you'll know me as boss. I don't say that for any other reason for me to be the boss because I want to be out there and you to be down there. But I think it's absolutely right because I think um, that shows a mark of respect. I think that when we're in hotels and places like that, there'll be a few Johns about, and that's my name, John. And if you get in a hotel and shout out John, and I might think that's me, and I don't think that's right. So from now on in, when we're together, 
you know me as boss. I'm not here to slag off what other people have done before me. I'm not here to slag off Malcolm Allison. Whatever you thought about Malcolm Allison, I thought twice as much. I played with him for an awful long while. He was my best friend, still is my best friend, at West Ham for the years that we played together up there. So, as far as I'm concerned, he did a, a, a marvellous job, and I think, and I'm conceited enough to think, and that's why I'm in management, I'm just conceited enough to think that we can do better than what we've done. We have little forms of, uh, of discipline if, if, if people misbehave and do things wrong. For instance, if you're late in training, you get fined. If you're late for the coach, you get fined. On match days, everybody, just everybody who comes to Car uh, to Carro, sorry about that, main road, for a first team match will wear a collar and tie and a jacket. A coat or tops. You don't wear pullovers, you wear a collar and tie and you wear a, either a jacket or a, or a leather jacket. That will be done. If you don't do that, you'll be fine. The thing is about attitude. The thing is about having a good attitude of mind to the game. Don't you tell me you'll, you'll wake up Saturday mornings and you, feel, you won't feel like playing. You'll feel a little bit indifferent. The thing is about your mind and your attitude of mind when you get out on that football field. I shall be pushing you, I shall be shoving you, I shall be demanding from you. Give it me, and with all the conceit in the world, I'll tell you, that you'll find me as good as anybody in the country in terms of looking after you. Don't do it, and you can be on your bike as quickly as that. I can't spell it out any quicker or any easier than that to you. I shall be looking and asking an awful lot from you from now on in. Uh, when I was manager at, at Bournemouth and Ted McDougall was a player underneath of me, he said that, I don't think you should ask players. There was times when I'd ask players uh, certain things and he said, I don't think you should ask players what to do. He said, I think that you should tell them what to do. He says, and they respond far more readily to that sort of um, thing than they do if you ask them. And I think he's absolutely right. I think that um, they need to be disciplined. They, and, they, and, and if there is discipline about, I think that they like it. I don't, I think sometimes it, it cut across their path and they, they get a little bit sort of upset about it all, but basically they like the thing to be a disciplined, well-run um, sort of outfit and, uh, and uh, it suits them far better. Bond City won 10 out of the next 13 games. Everybody was arguing about where the magic had suddenly come from. Alison said Bond had only inherited his players who were bound to come good. Bond said he found the players confused when he arrived. He bought four experienced players to add to Malcolm's side, but three of them couldn't play in a League Cup tie. So here was John Bond's biggest test. Could Bond beat West Brom with Allison's team? To make it worse, City begin by giving away an own goal. City have made it. 